Hello and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Mark Lockridge here. I'm the pastor of New Life Fellowship in Letterkenny and Milford Reformed Presbyterian Church. It's great to have you with us. I want us to think today about how do you measure love? There's all sorts of different ways you could measure love. You could measure love in terms of affection. You could measure love in terms of generosity. You could measure love in terms of acts of service. But one of the greatest ways to measure love is when things have gone wrong in a relationship. If two parties are estranged, we can measure love by seeing who takes the first step, who is willing to make a move towards the other person. And we can measure love by seeing how much a person is willing to suffer so that a relationship can be restored. I came across a story once of a Chinese Christian farmer. Every day he pumped water into the rice paddies and every morning he returned to find that a neighbour who lived down the hill had opened the sluice gates to let the water run into his own fields. At last the, the Christian man became desperate. His own rice was going to die. He wondered what he should do and he prayed. And The next day he rose early in the morning and first filled his neighbour's fields and then he attended to his own. You see, he took the first step and he paid a price so that things could be put right. And I want us to think about a verse in the Bible from 1 John chapter 4, and it's verse 10. It says this, This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now note a couple of things. Note, it's God who takes the first step. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. That's our great problem. We don't love God. He's our creator. He's the one who gives us life, who gives us this planet, who provides everything for us, and we owe him everything. But we're a bit like squatters who move into someone's home and use their electricity, their Wi-Fi, eat food from their fridge. We live in God's world with the lives he gave us, and we don't give him the time of day. Unless, of course, we feel we really need him. Then we ring the bell of prayer and summon him to our aid. We live in God's mansion, as it were, and we've relegated him to the role of butler. We haven't loved him or given him the recognition he deserves. Not that we loved God. But it's worse than that because that phrase is kind of an understatement. Because the verse speaks about our sins. We're actually enemies of God. We've trampled his rights, cursed him to his face, blasphemed his name, crudely joked about his beautiful gifts, used and abused ourselves and others for our own pleasure. And if we were nice on the outside, we were hypocrites on the inside, full of pride and self-righteousness and envy, selfishness and anger. It was not that we love God, but by far it was the opposite. We are nothing, specks of dust on a tiny planet, and worse than that, rebels. And yet who takes the first step? This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. But note also that God takes the costly step. How do you measure love? By how much a person is willing to do or to suffer to put things right, especially if it's not their fault. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We stand guilty before God. There's a mountain of holy justice ready to fall on us. No blind eye will be turned. But what does God do? He sends his Son into the world to deal with our guilt. That's astonishing. Think of someone you don't get on with, someone who has no time for you, and ask yourself, what will I send them? God sends the best he has to give. And he gives them as a sacrifice for our sins to pay the price of justice for our guilt. That's what that little phrase, an atoning sacrifice. The word atone means to make at one. That's what the word literally means. To make at one. We were separated from God and we can now be at one with him. What would you give to help an enemy? What would you give to free an enemy? This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and gave his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. How do you measure love? Who acts first to resolve a dispute? And who bears the cost 
in restoring a relationship. It may be that the cross has been a mystery to you. It's the heartbeat of Christianity. It's a place where God gave himself in our place so that we could be forgiven. He gave his son and we need to receive his son. We need to admit that we are people with guilt. We need to ask God to give his son for our guilt so that we can be forgiven. And when we go to the cross, we can know the power and wonder of forgiveness and the depth of God's love. And then we can say, this is love. Not that I loved God, but that he loved me and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for my sins. Thanks for listening. If you want to get in touch, drop me a line at mark at newlifefellowship.ie. Have a great week.